All right, hey guys, Wes here from Colton RV and Marine, and today we're gonna to be checking out the 22 Airstream Flying Cloud 27 Front Bed Twin. Um, I'm gonna be taking you guys around this, around the outside and on the inside, and if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment box below, and we'd love to get to all your questions on this beautiful unit here. So let's start right up in the front. Like, would like to point out that this is their 27 model. Um, it's gonna come in at exactly 28 feet, two inches, and you're gonna have a gross vehicle weight of 7,600 pounds. So that's gonna put the dry weight at this about eh, 64 and some change. Um, perfect for a half ton vehicle and very popular size model for any of your Airstream buyers out there. So starting right up here in the front, you're gonna notice you're gonna have the nice uh, stainless steel cover for your propane uh, tanks here. They're going to be two 30 pounders. I'll pop that open so you guys can get a good look at what those look like. Next, we have the nice power tongue jack. Um, it's going to be nice and easy to lift that on and off your hitch. Standard on anything Caravel level and up, which is awesome. And then the nice Demco easy latch hitch. So when you are gonna be hooking this up to your vehicle, you're not gonna have to fight to couple your ball. Super easy to flick that back and forth and get you set up. Uh, a couple other cool things going on here in the front. Um, they have a battery box container for where your batteries go. So we already have some batteries installed in here for you. They're gonna be the AMGs. Um, this one's also gonna have the solar package, which is why the AMGs are in there. They work a little bit better with the solar package, but you know, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But you have a nice uh, battery box here to keep your batteries safe from the elements. You know, rain, sun, snow, wherever you're taking your thing camping. Um, over here on this side, you have an LP quick port. So that's going to siphon right off of your LP tanks. And, you know, it's going to be good if you want to hook up some sort of gas grill to your unit. Um, Airstream does even provide the hose for it and the welcome kit as well, which is pretty awesome. Um, storage in this thing is pretty unique. On the twin model, you're actually going to have three different outside storages. You're going to have one in the front and two on the sides. I'd also like to point out the stainless steel rock guards um, on this guy as well. So the main function of these is pretty much going to be protecting your investment. Um, you know, if you're traveling down the road and you kick up any rocks or anything of that nature, you know, the effect is that these are going to block them and, you know, keep the body of your Airstream safe. Also on the, uh, you know, unfortunate chance that somebody might back into your unit, hopefully they just back into this and they don't damage your unit itself. Uh, you'll see you'll have the nice window coverings here. So these are going to filter out about 70% of UV light going into your unit. And then I'll show you how this front window opens up here. So the nice thing about Airstream and one of the coolest features that I love the most is the amount of windows and the amount of windows that you can open on it. So if you want to open your inside window, it's pretty easy. You're going to lift this guy up. You're going to screw in the little mechanism here. And then on this side, and then on the inside, you're going to work the dual cam latches, which I'll show you guys in a little bit, and you can pop this window open. This window is going to have three different um, ways to pretty much open at various heights. You have a small, a medium, and then, of course, you know, fully open as well. So you can get a pretty good circulation in here with the uh, windows once they're all open if you have your fan running as well. So even on a warm day, and let's say you're not trying to run your AC, um, very possible to have all your windows open and your fan running in there and still get um, a significant amount of cool air in this thing. Uh, the other thing I'd like to point out in the front here is even though this model is already equipped with factory solar on the roof, for any of those folks that are solar enthusiasts and they're looking to get more power to your unit, they have a ZAMP solar plug-in at the front of the unit. You're going to find this on pretty much all Airstreams. And that's just going to be for any type of uh, solar portable panels that you want to bring with you. It's already wired to the batteries um, themselves. So that will give you a little bit of extra power than what's already on the roof, which is pretty awesome. Swooping around this way of the unit. 
This is another extra storage spot that you're gonna get with the twin bed setup, something that you're not gonna find if you do the queen bed setup. And you'll have another one of those storage compartments identical on the other side as well. Close that guy up here. Uh, this unit's gonna have four stabilizer jacks and Airstream gives you the tool for it and the welcome kit as well. So you'll have two up in the front and you're gonna put your tool right on here and then you're simply just gonna crank it right down and that's gonna help stabilize your Airstream. And then you're also gonna have two in the back for that as well. This flying cloud is also equipped with the window awning package. So you're gonna have a nice awning that's gonna go the whole length this way and then one off of the, the back of your unit as well. So this is an option on the cloud. Uh, their Airstream Flying Cloud Series is probably their most versatile with the most floor plans, most configurable floor plans, and most options. Now this guy does come with a tool, but I believe I am tall enough to at least show you what it looks like. And all you gotta do is just hook it right into here. Now, it's not meant to you know, kind of stay under this and hang out. That's what the other awning is for on the other side, the actual awning. This is more or less to help uh, shade your Airstream should you be on a hot day or if you want to restrict the amount of sunlight coming into your windows. Uh, I'll show you guys what's going on over here. So all Airstreams are going to have an outside shower behind this uh, compartment here. Uh, you're going to pop this guy open and it's going to have a hot and cold um, lever there to turn on. And then you're gonna have a wand, it's probably about yay big. Um, purpose for that, if you got any gear that you wanna wash off or if you got any pets um, that, you, that you're bringing with you, easy just to get them cleaned up before they step inside your unit. Um, swooping and down over in the bottom here, this is where you're gonna dump your gray and your black tank. Pretty self-exclamatory um, for most people. Um, your black tank lever is going to be here, your gray tank here, and then of course this is just the cap to your sewer system. And then you'll want to hook a sewer hose up to that when you're going to be emptying your tanks. And that's all stuff if you end up purchasing anything with us that we show you during your orientation. And it even has a nice little convenient push light should you be doing any of it in the dark. And you might be wondering, well, where am I gonna keep my sewer hose? Well, the answer to that is just right over here. So it has a nice little plastic receptacle right here that's gonna fit in your sewer hose. Now, if you're gonna be going to a place and you're gonna have full hookups, this is where all these components are gonna come in. So one I'd like to point out, your smart plug. So I think the coolest thing about this plug is it's got the grips on the sides to lock into place and all you gotta do is plug it straight in. You know, a lot of other campers out there, it's gonna be more of like a circular type plug and you gotta turn it, twist it, lock it into place. You know, it could take a little bit of time. Airstream has kind of simplified the process by just straightforward plug-in and then these automatically grip the sides. Now with this particular unit here, it's gonna be a 50 amp service because another option we added on this great unit is a second AC. So anytime you have two ACs in your unit, it's automatically gonna bump up your power to 50 amps from 30. Um, this is gonna be your cable power here, or satellite. You know, if you're going to a site and they got the coax hookup for the cable or satellite, you're gonna hook that right in and that's gonna stream right to your televisions. Um, when you are gonna be cleaning out your uh, sewer area, we do have a black tank flush on these guys as well. All you're gonna simply do is hook a hose into there. That's gonna spray inside your black tank and that's gonna help uh, clean that out once you're doing that. Um, for continuous drinking water, when you're hooking up at your city water connection here, again, simple as just hooking in a water hose into here. And then with Airstream, they already got the PSI regulator built in. So you don't have to worry about buying a PSI regulator. Uh, one of the things is when you're at campsites and have full hookup, sometimes the pressure of the water that they're pumping out is pretty immense. So that regulator is gonna help uh, regulate that type of pressure going in so you're not gonna burst any of your water lines, which is a huge plus. And then Airstream likes to keep your 
freshwater tank fill over here under lock and key. Now you're only really gonna be needing to fill this if you plan on doing any type of, let's say dry camping or boondocking, or if you are traveling and you are looking to stop and have some water in your unit, um, that's where you're gonna fill it up. Everything behind lock and key, Airstream does this with every single model, nothing they change, doesn't matter which one you're looking at. Pretty cool. Swooping around this way, this is just gonna be your outside outlet for your furnace. So this is gonna pump out um, some pretty hot air uh, if you have your furnace turned on. So what a lot of folks will do is they'll get like a little metal cover uh, for this to put over it. And then you're just gonna wanna be careful when you are running your furnace that if you do have to go on this side for anything that you know, you're not gonna wanna brush your hand on here because I promise you will burn it. Now coming around to the back, this is probably my favorite feature of this unit is the back hatch. So the back hatch is only offered in the Flying Cloud series and the International series, and you can only do it on the 25 and 27 uh, models. It's great for a couple of different reasons. Um, you know, reason one, if, you know, let's say you're going camping at a park or a lake or a pond, you know, imagine backing this thing up with the beautiful scenery out back and then having this great openness for airflow to check out the scenery. The screen will keep you protected from bugs or anything that you don't want inside going into the camper or if you, you know, if you want to have this open and be bold, the easy two magnetic latches that keep it into place there. The other feature for this, and it's another reason why a lot of folks like it, for storage reasons. You know, if you're going out and you got, let's say a mountain bike or an e-bike or a kayak or a canoe, if you're comfortable with putting that into your Airstream, super simple to take this table down and put whatever you got inside of here, no problem. So you don't need any additional pieces, you know, like a hitch for the back or anything like that. If you're bringing a bike, you know, want to put the bike rack on your Airstream and put it right inside here. I would say that those are probably the two main reasons why, you know, somebody would, uh, you know, buy this uh, hatch option. And then looking at the bumper here, they give you a nice little storage space, just mostly for tools. I mean, you're not going to fit a ton in there, but you know, at least you have that option if you want to put something in there, but that's possible. I'd like to point out too that all Airstreams, shut this so we can take a little look-see at that real quick, all come installed with the backup camera and monitor. Now that's gonna be true on anything Bambi level and up. And if you notice on this guy too, we also have the window awning package as well. So that will come down when you have your hatch fully shut and then you can prop that into place pretty easily. but I wanna get some fresh air in there, so I'm gonna keep this guy open. Uh, the other thing I'd like to point out are the backup lights here and for braking. So Airstream is known for their craftsmanship and quality. I mean, most of what you see here is all handcrafted. They've been doing this for over 90 years now. They spare no expense when building this product. These are cast aluminum. And then you got LED automotive grade lighting back here. So it's not cheap materials that they're using when they're putting this together. They're even going as far as to making their own windows and riveting them in, which are done completely at the Airstream factory out in Jackson Center, Ohio. You get the nice curve to them, nice panoramic view when this is shut. Likewise with the front, that's gonna be on pretty much any Airstream that you look at, that's gonna be tandem axle. Swooping over this way, I left the stairs up on purpose. Uh, I want to show you guys how they work because I know a lot of folks are kind of intimidated with pulling the Airstream stairs down. They're not as easy as some of the other trailers. So I'm going to take a quick second here and show you guys how this works. So you got a two latch mechanism for your stairs that are going to keep it stored up and under. So when you want to release that, you're going to grab both of these at the same time and push them straight up. Now, if you notice the stairs came right down, if you do that and the stairs don't come down, probably got to do a little bit of maintenance there. 
in order to ensure that that happens. Now the next step, this is where I think people kind of get confused. I don't like to take it all the way down because I'm going to confuse myself. If I keep the step right here, flip it again. Simple as that. Airstream steps all the way down. And then you got the nice grips on there. So even if it's super slippery, you're not going to fall off. And these are aluminum steps, which you're going to get anything Caravel trimming up. So they're very sturdy and durable. And if you want to put it away, I keep it simple. Close those two hinges that way and back. But I'm going to keep this down so we can get in the trailer. You're going to have the great screen door here that Airstream Custom makes at their facility. And then if you do have any fur babies, they give you the extra protection here so that even if your pet happens to chew through the screen there, it's kind of difficult to get through this piece here. One of the things I'd like to point out is the door on the Airstream. You know, this I think really attests to the quality that they're, that they're putting out. I mean, it takes them on average about eight hours just to construct this door here. Um, it's super heavy. Uh, it's very durable. Um, I mean, this thing for all intents and purposes is almost like a bank vault door, you know? I mean, if I were to take this door off the hinges, I mean, it would weigh a significant amount of weight and it's okay if you slam it. I mean, that's what they want you to do to it. Very durable. Locking mechanisms on here. You have two, so you have your main lock, which for Airstream, they're a little bit different. Um, most campers are gonna use, you know, an M key, a Bauer key. Um, they have a universal set, set is basically what I'm trying to say. Airstream does not. Airstream keys are all labeled individually. So I think you got about a one in 100 chance that your key might actually open somebody else's. So the odds out there that you're gonna get in somebody else's Airstream, very slim. And then the other set of security that they have is going to be their deadbolt lock, which that key is going to be completely different for everybody. So you put your key in there, it's going to deadbolt lock it, or if you're on the inside, get this out of my way, and then it's going to come out right there. And then the door has a nice little holder right here. So if it's windy and gusty, the door's not going to slam shut on you. All right, so this is going to be your main awning. Now, anything on the flying cloud is going to be a manual awning. Now, this is going to be your main awning for when you want to pull it out and you want to hang out, you know, if it's raining out, if it's sunny out, or, you know, whatever you want to use it for. So there's a couple things that need to happen. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate it right here. It's a little bit windy today. I don't want anything to, you know, happen to the awning. But you're going to have a circular latch over on the, this side and then on the other side as well. So Airstream provides you with a rod. It's about yay big and you're going to be able to put that rod in the circular level there. All you're going to simply do is twist it, pull it off. Same thing with that side. You need to unlock that piece which that's what the circle part is for. And then it's simply just a matter of getting the rod into those pieces up there just how I demonstrated with the window awning, same idea, only I'm not tall enough to reach that, so I definitely would need the rod. And then you're gonna pull it on out. And then it's just as simple as um, moving the two uh, pieces of the awning, levers up, and then setting it up. Now it sounds like a lot, and I know I didn't demonstrate it for you guys, but I promise you that's something we all show you um, during your orientation. It's actually really not that difficult to do. I mean, you could probably, once you become a pro at it, probably have your awning out in a matter of minutes. Um, here is going to be your ventilation for your cooking. So what a lot of people don't know is that on the inside, it's obvious that there is going to be a over the range fan there, but out here, once you turn that on, you have these two little plastic pieces that usually end up being over this, uh, plastic flap. If you don't move those and you have that, um, fan going, well, that's going to do nothing more than circulate the whatever you're cooking inside the Airstream. So you, you probably don't want to do that. So you want to come out here, make sure you push those two uh, plastic pieces away so that this flap is loose. 
kind of like it is now. I've lifted it up with my finger there. You can kind of see it. And then once you turn on that fan, it's going to start to filter out, you know, the smoke or whatever you got cooking in there. So it's not staying inside your airstream, but fun little fact for that. Uh, you're going to get your 110 plugs out here. So if you want to plug in a TV or anything of that nature while you're hanging out out here or any other type of uh, appliance, no problem. This is going to be your main access port to your on-demand hot water heater system. Uh, they use the Gerard system on the Airstream. That's going to be on-demand hot water. So once you turn this on, you're probably going to only need to wait a few seconds and then you're going to be running with a continuous stream of hot water, which is really nice. And then I'll show you guys on the inside where the control panel is for that. But if you ever need to get access to this, all you have to do is flip this lever over this way. That's kind of what you're looking at. And of course you got to have it on out here too, which you're going to flip that button as well. Close that up. And then again, same storage you guys saw on the other side, but take another peek at it. And the other thing I'd like to point out too is when you look at any of the um, cutouts here on Airstream, for instance, like your marker lights here for blinking, you know, Airstream doesn't just seal them um, with like a putty or anything. They actually use a gasket foam, marine gray, that you guys can kind of see there in order to ensure that you're not going to have any problems down the line um, with leaking. You know, Airstream probably goes above and beyond any other manufacturer when it comes to testing the trailer prior to it being released. Um, for a leak test. Every single travel trailer goes through the wet bay at their facility. You know, it's in there probably for about a half hour. Um, you know, they're spraying water on it uh, for, you know, a significant amount of time there in order to make sure that you're not gonna have a leak. There's a guy on the inside, you know, he's checking for leaks and they're spraying it, not just at a mist or anything like that, but you know, hurricane force uh, winds and rain on it. So you're gonna make sure that you're gonna get a product that's gonna last over time. That pretty much concludes everything up in here in the front, guys. Um, you know, let's go take a peek on the inside now. Here's the inside of the 27 uh, front bed twin flying cloud that we're taking a peek at. Uh, so here's gonna be your main dining area. Um, so when you're looking at uh, this unit, the table is a little bit different. So when you have the hatch, you can't have the table attached to the back of the Airstream like it would normally would be and how you'd normally find it in most units. So what they do for you is they give you this detachable table here. Pretty simple to get this guy off. All you're gonna do is lift it straight up and then these poles come right out of the, the base here. Now, you're gonna need to do this if you wanna turn this area into a bedroom. So Airstream technically lists the capacity of this at six people. Um, absolutely possible, pending the size, of course. Um, but if you're gonna to wanna to turn this area into a bed, you're gonna to have to take this tabletop down and then you're gonna rest it um, in place between here. And then you're gonna use the applicable cushions here to complete the bed. And then there's another part to the bed over in this area that I'll show you guys in just a moment that you're going to pull out. And then that's going to be able to complete this whole bed back area. You could probably get three to four people pending their size back here. Um, you know, maybe a couple more extra kids um, if they're smaller. Um, but this is also, not only is this the dinette area, but it's also going to be your extra sleeping quarters in this particular unit as well. Um, again, I just wanted to draw out the, the coolness of the hatch. I mean, you know, imagine you're sitting here eating breakfast, lunch, dinner, you know, whatever you choose, or you're just hanging out here and you look out, you got a mountain back here or a pond or a lake. I mean, it'd be pretty, pretty, pretty awesome. It's what this uh, hatch feature does for you. Even if you plan, never plan on bringing anything inside of here, that's okay. You know, a lot of folks are buying it just for the scenery factor of it. Um, you even got your nice little reading lights here that you can direct. And then of course, you know, at night, if you're looking to blacken it out, you can slide these curtains across, likewise over there. And then each one of these windows or portholes windows is gonna have a shade of some sort um, in order to block out the light. Uh, so let's just stand up here 
And let's point out the speaker system in here. So, and anything um, Flying Cloud, they're gonna give you the JL audio system. So a fairly loud system. Um, you're gonna have two speakers here. You're gonna have two more in the bedroom as well. Uh, you can do AM, FM, Bluetooth, um, you know, whatever your fancy. Uh, you got the nice little rubber cover for it. Uh, pretty simple to turn on. That's your power button here, volume knob, um, play, stop, brightness of the screen, settings, all that good stuff. Popping open the cabinet. So in the 2022 model, you're still going to have this Blu-ray DVD player. Um, when you get to anything 23, they have now retired this and they basically replaced it with a streaming um, spot for you to put in like you know, a Roku or a Fire Stick. You know, an HDMI port basically is what they're giving you. But because it's a 22, it still has the DVD player. So this guy's going to be able to you know, put a Blu-ray in there, run to your TV. Uh, that's over here into the bedroom. And then they also give you some options for charging over here as well too. Uh, I'd like to point out you know, the cabinetry here, you know, when you're rattling down the road, I mean, you got these really nice thick hinges. They're gonna keep your unit shut and they're definitely gonna keep it in place. So Airstream makes all their cabinetry in-house. So if you ever do need any type of replacement parts or anything like that, they make it super simple to contact them and they can send you, you know, whatever replacement piece that you might need. You know, things do still happen even in units of this luxury. And it's just a comfort of knowing that because most of this unit is constructed at their factory, it's easy to get replacement pieces for it. Um, so your primary storage in most Airstreams too is going to be your overhead cabinets. I mean, these are all going to be pretty deep cabinets. You'll have some more in the kitchen area. You have some more in the back bedroom. But because they don't really offer you a ton of outside storage, they do want to maximize what they can do on the inside. So they try not to leave a whole lot of dead space inside the unit for you to put things. You know, they're very crafty in their little locations um, for all the different things in here, for any of the stuff that you might wanna bring with you. You know, like for instance, down here, it would have been easier for them to say, yeah, let's just make this a solid piece. But instead, when you pull this down and you know, they even give you the storage totes to put stuff in here. Yeah, that's it's pretty awesome. And now that we're over here, I'll show you guys how to complete the bed. So all you gotta do is, if you wanna finish the bed off over here, pull this guy out. And then all you're simply gonna use from there is the cushions that are on there and you're gonna lay them across. So when you have this table down and this pulled out, you know, this whole area is gonna be pretty much one big L-shaped type bed. We're just gonna push that guy back in there. So the windows are pretty awesome in an Airstream. So they make all these windows uh, at the facility. They got the dual cam latch system here. So you get a nice seal on the outside. So if you wanna open them, you're gonna press them down like so. You know, move those guys out of the slot. Now, I'm gonna to attempt to open this window. Now, I say attempt because this window probably hasn't been open for a while. You will notice that if you don't open your windows regularly, what happens on Airstream windows, and it's not a problem, but once you slide down these latches here, sometimes the glass doesn't peel away from the seal. Now, if that doesn't happen, you can't open your window. What you don't wanna do is you don't wanna force it. Because if you force it, you're gonna break the window. What you wanna simply do is go on the outside, you know, if you got your finger, it's your finger in there or a credit card, something smaller that's not going to damage your glass. And then simply just peel the glass away from the seal in there. And then you'll be able to come back in here and open the window, but never force it. So let's see if we can get this to go. I don't know that we are because I think it's probably hasn't been opened in a while. Yeah, this one's probably not going to open. So I'm glad I explained that to you guys because in order to open this window, Again, I'm not going to force it. I simply would just go out there, peel it away from the seal. And then it's got three stages of which you can open it. You got a little track down there, one in the middle, and then one at the top. And it's simply just more or less navigating these and then getting them into the right track so the window stays up. Uh, swooping around to the galley here, you get a lot of good kitchen counter space in here. 
So if you want to bring a coffee maker or an air fryer, um, any type of appliances, you got plenty of room to put them on the counter. Your sink is going to be a nice square stainless steel sink with sprayer pull down. You're going to be doing any of the type of dishes there. Got a great amount of storage under the sink. And then Airstream does a good job of giving you a trash can too, which you're going to find in the side storage here too. And they give you the nice Rubbermaid trash can already for you. Coming over here to the kitchen. If you're not using your burner, they give you this glass top here. So it gives you a little bit of extra counter space. Uh, if you are going to be doing some cooking in here, it's easy. Nice hinge system here. Folds it away. You got some nice blue LED lighting on your burners here. And then we don't have any propane in the tanks, but pretty simple to light it. All you're going to do, turn these guys on. And then you got your sparker. And then each one of these will individually turn on as you turn the gas on and spark it up. And then again, if you want to turn on your hood, power button right here. But again, you're going to want to make sure you go out there to remove those plastic flaps. You can actually filter that air out. And they also have a nice little light here too, in case you're doing anything in the dark, which is great. Um, you guys probably noticed, you see some stuff here on the side walling. So this unit, because it's a 22, it's um, equipped with 180 watts of solar. And then this is the MPPT solar controller by Victron Energy. This is kind of just gonna measure how much power you're bringing in on a sunny day. And basically it's gonna help keep your batteries trickle charge. You know, if you guys are gonna be going out, I'd say boondocking goes a long way to help keeping your fridge uh, nice and powered if you're planning on going out for a couple of days. All refrigerators and now an Airstream are gonna be 12 volt. So this thing is gonna take energy right off of your battery especially if you're dry camping and you don't have those hookups or if you're going to be going to a place with full hookups it's going to work off your shore power as well too so a lot of people love the solar option definitely helps out a lot this little next panel next to it's going to be your power inverter so anything um, flying cloud is going to automatically come installed with a thousand um, watt uh, pure sine wave inverter and basically all this is going to do is if you are going to be uh, you know, camping or taking this thing out and you're not hooked up to shore power and you guys want to use your outlets, you're going to turn your inverter on and anything that's connected to it is going to be able to run um, like your cell phone if you want to plug it in or your laptop or your tablet or any types of uh, products like that. Um, if you don't have that on and you don't have shore power hooked up, it's not going to do anything. So it's nice that Airstream already comes with these um, installed in their units. And then up here, uh, they got their battery monitor, fresh and gray tank monitor station as well. So you click the battery, it'll tell you where you're at voltage wise. You click your fresh tank, it shows up in percentages. Same thing with your gray and black. So this is going to kind of alert you if you have to do anything um, with your gray and your black tank. You know, once you start getting closer um, to a higher percentage, of course, you're going to want to dump those. And your water pump uh, button is also found up there as well. And that's going to be used for if you uh, fill up your fresh tank and you want to get that water from the fresh tank, that's how you're going to go about doing that. So I'd like to point out next, guys, the ceiling here. So the ceiling, you're going to notice you don't see the actual AC unit peeking out like you would in most uh, tow behind travel trailers. That's because in Airstream's design, they call it quiet stream. The way that they install this, they do that on purpose so you don't see the physical unit and it makes it overall a little bit quieter in here when you're running your AC. And the other thing that they do is they give you these nice covers. So you can do a couple things with these. You can direct the air. See how you have the little slits here. And then there's also an interior one here which will also close off the vent. So they go a little bit the extra mile when installing that AC system to make sure it's very efficient for cooling down your unit and making it a lot quieter as well. And with the superior insulation of these, um, you know, Airstream uses Ecobatten insulation. 
Um, so to give you the quick rundown on how it's constructed, you have the outside aluminum shell. Um, all that is riveted. And then you have an inside aluminum shell. And in between there, you have the Ecobatten insulation. So these probably offer, you know, most of the superior um, insulation in this. Um, you know, if you're on a hot day, I mean, this thing's going to be pretty cool even just running one AC. But the cool thing about this particular model is we have another AC as well. And a good way to tell whether a unit has one or two ACs, just look at the ceiling. You know, you got your little uh, rectangular cutouts here. That's basically where your filter's at. If you have to change them, same thing over there. Uh, the other thing I'd like to point out up here is the nice skylight. Gives you a nice amount of light coming into the unit. It feels very bright in here with the amount of windows and the amount of um, space that you got. I mean, even if today, today's fairly nice sunny day out, but even if it wasn't the sunniest, it would still feel super bright in here just because of all these windows that Airstream offers. It's, it's amazing. And again, all these have pull down shades, you know, simple as hooking them into here. If you want to close the portholes, these guys will slide up for you. Same thing with the guy here. Your lights are going to be all LED, and those are going to have a nice convenient location right at the front of the coach here. Well, technically the back. You got all your on off switches and then your battery disconnect. Now, if you want to dim these lights, these lights all have a dimmer too. It's going to be hard to tell looking because of the daylight, but if you can kind of see it, how the lights get brighter or they get dim. It's a pretty cool feature that you can dim the lights in here too. And then your battery uh, disconnect is really um, awesome as well. So the way I kind of describe this battery uh, disconnect is green means good. If it starts beeping at you, bad. So what Airstream has designed for this is once your um, battery gets down to a certain voltage, your um, battery disconnect is going to start beeping at you. And it's kind of annoying. It's going to be beep, beep. That's just kind of indicating to the owner that you have to now charge your batteries. So the best course of action to do that would be to plug it into a power source. Um, if you don't get it plugged in in the applicable time, your battery disconnect is going to automatically shut off to try to conserve what power that you still have on the battery. So a pretty cool feature of the battery disconnect here in the Airstream. Swooping around back to the kitchen, take a look at the storage they give you above. And then they give you a ton of different cabinets here. I think it's cool that Airstream always provides the section for your silverware to go in the top drawer. All these guys open. And then this too. Now the other option that we added to this is going to be the convection microwave. So if you opted to not go for this, what would be here would be an oven. Now, most folks when they're ordering are going to go with the convection microwave. So you're going to be able to do baking in there as well as have all the same functionalities as a microwave too. Now you might be wondering, well, if I want the oven, do I still get a microwave? And this particular model the answer would be yes. What they would do is, Instead of getting this beautiful pantry here, you'd have a pull-out microwave, and your pantry basically gets cut in half. So that's why a lot of folks go with the connection microwave, because you get the nice slide-out pantry. You get a nice amount of space in here too, and that's pretty deep, and it goes all the way to the back as well. I know we kind of already talked about the fridge being 12 volt, um, but with that being said, you do get a lot more space in this than you would with a normal gas and um, electric fridge. You know, 12 volt refrigerators are kind of really taken over as far as, um, you know, putting those old school fridges to bed. You know, RVing, when you think of fridges, a lot of manufacturers, since they've started making them, have always traditionally been propane or electric. You know, now with the technology out there, um, these fridges are really starting to take over and a couple of advantages for them. I mean, one, they don't take anywhere near as long 
for uh, to cool down than a propane one would. Um, you know, the, the coach doesn't have to be level in order for it to be efficient. If it's super hot outside, it still ends up um, keeping internal temperature in here very well. So they're, they're really starting to shine. And, you know, when you add solar to it, you know, it's, it's not a big deal. I know for a lot of folks, you know, change is kind of scary. And, you know, if you're a boondocker, you know, you might be a little bit intimidated by a fridge like this. You know, well, are my batteries going to last is the biggest question that I typically hear. Um, if I'm going to take this out and have this fridge. And if you have solar, it's not really a concern at all. So stepping in through here, through the hallway, once you get to their 27 foot model, like this is, you get a double door closet. This is the rod that we were uh, speaking about there on the outside to help with your awning. And then of course that's going to be for your jacks. Um, those table legs there have a nice little convenient spot in here too. So Airstream's kind of thought of everything for that. And then if you're looking for some privacy, if you do have any company, Airstream's got these built-in curtains that you can set up. So there's gonna be two of these. You're gonna have one right next to the bedroom and one here, but simple as just sliding across the track and now you got some privacy. Really easy, not too hard to work at all. And if you want to put it back, wrap it around. We got the nice Velcro on here. Super simple. Tuck it back in. You want to trip over it. Snap it into place. Easy as that. Uh, you might notice that what this black box is, it's going to be all your fuses and breakers. So if you have any electrical type of issues, I mean, this is probably the first place you're going to want to check. And everything's nice and labeled, what goes to where. Um, if you have any problems with your fuses, easy access to pull them out, put a new one in, you know, I always recommend, you know, taping a couple fuses in here and that way at least you'll have them should you have any problems. And well, while I'm down here, you know, Airstream builds all their, um, heating elements into their cabinetry. So you don't have any holes in the floor here. So any, any time you see one of these, this is going to be a ventilation for when you turn your furnace on. You keep you nice and toasty in here. So this is going to be what how Airstream does their bathroom in this size. Um, you know, once you kind of step out of your smaller units and your 23 footers, your bathroom's pretty much always going to be located in your hall here. So they do separate uh, toilet and shower. So your shower, pretty decent size. You got the nice little drying line too if you gotta dry out any towels. And then it also has a push up vent and a little fan in there as well to help ventilate some of that out. And then on this side, it's gonna be the rest of your bathroom. All right, so inside the bathroom here, a uh, couple of things I wanna point out. Um, so one here's gonna be your controller to your hot water heater system. So simple, easy to turn it on, and then you can set the temperature right there. And then again, you know, if you're hooked up uh, to city water, or if you're just going to be taking water from your fresh tank and you're looking to take a hot shower, hot water out of the sink or your kitchen sink up there, you know, this is going to heat up pretty rapidly. And then we'll keep a nice constant stream of hot water for you as well. Uh, pretty easy panel to work. Um, you have some nice storage in here. You got your vanity with a mirror on top. This also has a vent up here as well that you push up with a small fan. Got your light. Got a nice little storage shelf in here for anything that you need. Um, stainless steel uh, bathroom sink. Bunch of little cubbies. Now you can slide for storage. And then of course, porcelain toilet. Towel holders, another one here. So even though this is a small space, they do as much as they can to make sure that you're gonna have plenty of room to put all your bathroom stuff in here, which is pretty cool. So we're just gonna shut the door on this guy. So we closed up the bathroom, we're done in there. And then I'm gonna show you guys the next part uh, well, my second favorite part of this unit, and that's going to be the bedding area. 
So in an Airstream, you can either have a queen or you can have a twin bed. So the twin bed offers a couple of great things. One, space. So you can make that transition right from walking into the hallway into here and you're not bumping into anything. I mean, you still have plenty of room to operate in here, no problem. Um, when you have a queen bed, the second you walk in from your hallway, I mean, you're smack dab in front of the bed already. And then you have to squeeze around to the sides to get across. It just, it kind of jumbles things a little bit. Um, even though a lot of people do like that option, I personally think the twin bed is a great way to go just because of the space. The other nice thing that the twin bed offer is a longer bed itself. So these are gonna actually be longer um, than an actual queen bed if you were to go that route. And then of course the storage aspect of it is great too. So you lift these up here and you got a great amount of space, the bin and all. And the same thing on the other side there. So you get a lot of good storage. And then I'm not a super tall person, but I fit on this bed, no problem. Super comfortable beds, by the way. The other couple other things I'd like to point out in here, um, your second AC. So if you do go with the second AC option, this is where it is installed. Um, if you don't go with this option, that's okay too. They would give you another fantastic fan, um, just similar to the one that's over there in the galley area. You got your own TV. This thing pop right off the wall. You got your own controls in here to dim the lights. And then this is where you're gonna control your temperature. So whether you wanna turn on your, your heat, whether you wanna turn on your AC, that's gonna happen all from here too. Now, a lot of folks ask me too, if you're going camping and let's say you can only go to a 30 amp type service, but this is 50 amp, can you convert down? The answer to that is, of course you can. And if you do that, that's absolutely fine, but you're only gonna to wanna to run one AC at a time. So you can easily select the zone here on the Dometic um, thermostat to pick where, which AC you want to work. So you don't have to worry about if you're going to a place where they don't have a 50 amp service, you can still convert it down to a 30 amp um, with the applicable adapter too, of course. The other nice thing you can get in here, extra closet space. So they give you some shelves in there too. Uh, if you wanna take those right out, you can. You can turn into a closet, any type of storage. But again, helps out a lot if you got a lot of stuff to have that extra space. At the nice overhead camp cabinetry again over here. Um, got your other speakers back here. So if you are going to be playing some music, you are going to hear it back here as well. And then you got the nice nightstand here. Long pull-out drawer. And then you do got options. Plug in your phone over here, no problem. If you want to darken it, you can slide the shades across. And then this is also going to be your emergency exit window. If you have to get out of here for whatever reason in a hurry, and you can't go back that way. Simply can navigate this window here, pull it off, undo the clasps, and out the window you go. That's really pretty much in the event of a fire, but you know, when you're out, anything's possible. So better be safe than sorry, I always say. Your window back here will also open as well. So if you are trying to get some fresh air in here, again, you got the dual cam latches that you're gonna uh, pull down and then you can pop that window out out there and get some nice air flow in here. And then your window over here also opens. And then of course, if you want to open your emergency exit window without trying to escape, you can do that as well. So you have a nice uh, cross breeze in here. So maybe you don't necessarily have to run your AC. So you get the lovely decorative pillows with any Airstream that you buy. They try to match it up nicely to your comforter. Um, with this uh, particular unit, um, you're gonna be looking at the Seattle mist color. So that's what was giving you guys that gray color in the dinette area. Now the lamp, if you go with the other color, which is Carolina clay, that doesn't do anything to your cabinet colors, doesn't do anything to the laminate colors at all, or the flooring. The only thing it's gonna do is gonna change your furniture color back there to a darker tan type color, if you will. So there's only two color choices in a flying cloud. Seattle Mist seems to be the most popular. 
Um, with the 2022, you're still gonna have this gloss finish on your cabinets. Um, you will see now, if you're looking at videos of 23 Airstreams, that this is no longer um, offered. What they do for you is same color, except for it being a gloss finish, though it's a matte finish. I mean, that pretty much concludes everything here um, on the inside, guys. I mean, I try to touch upon, um, you know, most of the stuff that I think is important for you. Um, you know, we are looking to have this uh, unit go to a good home. If you have any questions or any comments or concerns, you can, can reach out in the comment box and, you know, I'll be glad to answer those questions for you. Um, Thanks again for all your time, and you know this is Wes, and you know we've enjoyed uh, having you come view this unit with us here at Colton RV and Marine. Have a great day. Bye.